Hey bag ladies and bag dudes. Today I'm going to be talking about wire fabric baskets for fabric storage, my Tudor bag and Lilium laptop bags that I just finished, new mushroom fabrics from Sarah Watts for cotton and steel fabrics, Quilts in America will be my book review for tonight, my demonstration will be for how to make an adjustable strap two different ways and I have a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me. I saw tons of comments coming through on Facebook and YouTube, so I love to see that. I love to see the chatter. And I see Darlene's joining me over on YouTube, Doreen also on YouTube, Gregory on Facebook. So thanks so much everyone for joining me for Social Sunday. So I wanted to share something with you really quick. Um, I got a really nice surprise in the mail yesterday. Sarah Algren made two luggage tags and sent them over to us. She used uh, the black cork fabric with silver metallic accents, which is one of my favorites. And she was so sweet. She embroidered Bag Dude on this luggage tag and Bag Lady on the other. So we're definitely gonna use these when we go to Tennessee this Saturday on our luggage. We're not flying, but I think it's always cool to have some, a little bit of bling on your luggage. So just as a friendly reminder, Nearly everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more that way. All right, so I know I've shown this in the past on my live chats, but the notion of the week will be my fabric baskets because I got a couple emails about this over this past week, which exact fabric baskets that I use. So again, links in the description. And I have, how many of these do I have? I think I have 10 of these. I have one basket for each of my solid colors, so the Roy G. Biv colors. And then I have one basket each for my uh, monochromatic or blender fabrics. So these are mostly all Allison Glass fabrics in the pink and red colorings, and I tried to fold them the nicest that I could. These wire baskets would also be great for scraps, and I chose, I think this was a gunmetal finish. They had other colors as well, I think possibly gold, maybe rose gold. I don't remember exactly, but the link's in the description. There's also several different sizes. Um, I believe I chose the small. Um, my exact wire baskets are the ones that I linked to in the description, but there's also other size and color options. So these are pretty handy. I could see these being really great for fabric scraps also, especially if you're keeping your fabric scraps organized by colors or themes. Um, themes, I'm not sure what types of themes you would be organizing, but possibly like all floral fabrics, um, just different themes to your fabric. So these are the wire baskets. Um, I have them behind me. I know you can see the purple one out of the corner of the screen, but I have them all organized by color, which is really nice and helpful, especially when I'm working on quilt blocks and I'm working with certain um, colors that I've pre-chosen, like maybe my quilt block will be blues, greens, and yellows. It's really nice to have those organized by color in those wire baskets, and it makes it quicker to pull the fabrics that I need, and I try my best to keep those baskets organized, and I think for the most part I do a pretty good job of folding them nicely and putting them away after I've used them for the project or the quilt blocks as opposed to just throwing them in the basket. Um, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. How do you store your fabric scraps? So do you have a bin similar to what I have? Um, I used to keep my fabric scraps in hat boxes with lids, um, but I feel like the rectangular shape of those wire baskets works better for me as far as my bookcases that I use in the back because the round hat boxes that I used to have took up quite a bit of space and those fit perfectly in my bookcases. So this past week we were... Sarah, hold on. Oh, Danny's telling me to hold on. Um, Diane says, did Danny uh, pressure you to wear your polka dot blouse? You guys have a great memory. So this is not the one that Danny bought me. I but know, it's not the one I... And he's very upset that I was I wearing... I said that too. He was upset that I was not wearing the one he bought me. He bought me another one with uh, black fabric with white polka dots and it kind of, kind of tied in the front, um, similar to... It reminds me of like a vintage um, button down shirt, how it tied in the front. But anyway, I did not wear that one because I think my stomach shows a little bit in that one. And I was teaching today, so stomach showing 
when it you're does teaching. Not show your stomach. It does show my stomach a little bit. Anyway, stomach showing when I'm teaching is not professional, so I wore this one instead, and I thought it looked a little bit um, nicer. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> All right, so this week I did actually sew something. Um, I you get your fabrics. oh no, that's not next in the outline, Danny. Um, today, earlier today, I was teaching an Appaloosa bag workshop in the Chicago suburbs, and it was a lot of fun. Everyone had some great fabric choices for their bags, and they all looked totally different. So this was the bag, my bag for um, the class today. Um, it's getting a little bit smashed because it's been tucked away in my um, bag suitcases for for quite a long time. But here's the two bags that I sewed this week. I actually sewed something, so I'm really excited to share them with you. So the first one that I finished because we are filming the videos for the next four pack video bundle. So these are the bags from the video. So this is the Tudor bag. Um, it's got a nice adjustable strap. The Tudor bag is what I call my choose your own adventure bag. So there's tons of options in it and I like to think of it as a beginner friendly bag, but you can choose the options you want in your bag. So for example, if you don't want the side strap, if you only want the front handles, choose that from the pattern. There's um, an optional front zipper pocket. There's a recessed zipper closure, and I super love the lining fabric because I felt, because I chose more of a neutral base for the outside of the bag, I felt like my lining could be a little bit of a pop of color. So there's my lining for the Tudor bag. Another option instead of the zipper is magnetic snap. So all those options are in the pattern and will be in the video. Um, this will, one will be included in the four pack video bundle that comes out the very last week in August. I don't have a date yet. We're kind of pushing it to the pushing it to the metal here, trying to get the videos done at the last minute. But um, we did get two finished, so I'm really proud of that. And the second one that I finished is the Lilium laptop bag. So it comes in two different sizes. I decided to make size small because um, I haven't had a laptop in a while, but we got one recently, and it actually fits perfectly in size small. And I went with um, everyone's votes for from our recent live shows. I had two different fabrics that I was sort of auditioning. So I went with uh, the light colored fabric that I showed and um, a faux leather and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, here's what the lining looks like and there's a divider in the laptop bag and it's really well padded. So I don't know if this comes up, translates in the video, but there's besides the foam interfacing, there's half inch craft foam, which really protects the electronic device. If you're making this for a laptop, if you're not making this bag for a laptop, you can go ahead and skip that half inch foam, but it really helps protect things. So if the bag drops or falls, um, your laptop will be protected. All right, get, get that closed. Um, new fabric that I added to my stash this week. I admit I used some self-control because it, this new fabric line, I only picked up three pieces of fabric. So I'm gonna show you in the side camera which, which fabrics that I chose. So this is from Sarah Watts' new fabric line called Front Porch. Um, she designed this for cotton and steel fabrics. And I only picked up the mushroom prints, but there's some really cute lawn gnome prints as well. Um, and I picked up, this one's a rayon. I really liked the colors and the mushrooms look almost neon. When I use rayon for a bag, I like to interface it first with Pellon Shape Flex before attaching it to the foam. Because this fabric has a little bit of a drape and I don't want it stretching or warping while I'm working on the bag, so the Shape Flex really helps stabilize it. Um, I, of course I had to get the mushrooms in red and also green's my favorite color so I also got the mushrooms in green. So like I said, not a whole lot of fabrics to show you for today, but I was very happy that I was not contributing tons and tons more fabric to my stash because it's uh, slowly getting out of control. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. What is your favorite fabric theme? And what I mean by that, when you see a fabric in the store, if it's your favorite theme, you likely will get it. So today when I taught the Appaloosa bag workshop, someone made a giraffe bag and she said she had another bag with her that also had a giraffe print on it and um, she told me to call her uh, Giraffe Carol. So Carol will always buy giraffe fabric. So me, I love horses or unicorns. So if I see a horse or unicorn fabric, I'm likely to buy it. So polka that's what dots. I mean by theme. Oh, Danny's reminding me polka dots. Yes, polka dots I will always buy. So let me know in the comments what's your favorite fabric theme. Maybe elephants, maybe you love whales. 
uh, bumblebees, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see what types of fabric it, everyone's favorite is as far as the fabric theme. All right, so I already told you about my Appaloosa bag workshop. Um, I'm gonna pop over to the side camera and show you my book review for this week. It's a brand new book by Cave called Quilts in America, and I really love it, and one quilt in particular. So let me pop over there and show you the book. Okay, so this book just came out. Um, just to let you know, this book was actually sent to me by the publisher. Most of the books that I've talked about in the past are books from my stash, um, but they kindly sent me this book and I'll be giving away it away along with some fabric at the end of the show. All right, so these quilts were inspired by vintage quilts from the American Museum in Britain, which I thought was really awesome. The first, uh, maybe a couple dozen pages are dedicated to showing these vintage quilts that were inspired, uh, inspiring the quilt designs in the books. And I love this um, beautiful photography as well. So let me show you some of these vintage quilts and especially I have to point out this one in the yellow. So um, these are actual quilts and um, a lot of them were made before 1900. So this is the cigar silk ribbon quilt top. And I'm just gonna read you this little blurb about this quilt because it was really fascinating. So the the quilt is from around 1880. It said, cigar silk ribbons have been foundation piece to a backing fabric in the same manner as log cabin quilts. During the late 1800s, cigar companies tied bundles of cigars with silk ribbons, which had the name of the company or cigar manufacturer stamped on them. As cigar smoking was a common activity, most households had a plentiful supply of these ribbons. The bright gold color of these ribbons is still apparent in this piece. Yellow was the most common color for the silk ribbons, Different colors of ribbons denoted the different grades of cigars that were bound by them. So these are all the ribbons and I thought that was fascinating. I love text fabrics, but after this caught my eye and I read the description of what this quilt was really about, I thought I loved the story and I loved the ribbons and how they were assembled into a quilt. So there's lots of other vintage quilts and these quilts are represented by um, modern patterns later in the book. I thought it was interesting that some of the quilts have the maker's name listed and almost as many quilts had maker unknown and I thought that was a little sad and it was a right reminder to myself that when I make quilts I need to label them with my name and the date because who knows I'm not saying my quilts will ever be in a book like this because they, they sure won't but someone might look at my quilts um, you know 100 or 200 years from now and it would be very interesting I think for um, the maker's name to be known because especially the maker's name and the date so just something to keep in mind if you're making quilts okay so these are the rest of the vintage quilts I also loved this fan quilt and here's are the quilts as reinvented by cave so he put his own spin on them used his own fabrics and you can see what what a contrast the fabrics are compared to the vintage quilt. So these are all the quilt patterns that are seen in the book. I super love this one. This one's called Starburst. So all the instructions are in the back, but the vintage quilts and the modern representations are all pictured in the front. So it's kind of almost like a coffee table book combined with the actual instructions, which I thought was really cool. And there's my beloved polka dots. I love this moss on the roof of this building. I think it looks, I just think it looks amazing, the natural elements with the quilts in the foreground. Okay, so all of the instructions to make these quilts are represented in the back, and actually, if you'd like to make the exact same quilts, um, Kafe notes which fabrics that he used for which portions of the quilt so that you could replicate them if you want, or if you're just using the fabrics from your stash that you've chosen, you can do that as well. Okay, so that's the rest of the quilts. I'm just gonna give you a little view of what the patterns look like, not to give you the full projects, but as you can see here, all of the different fabrics are represented by how much you'll need, and then the instructions follow. So everything's pretty so much self-explanatory. I think there's some templates in the back of the book as well. Yeah, there's templates represented as well as some basic, basic quilting 
guidelines, but um, this book is almost 200 pages long, so quite a meaty title. I liked the vintage quilts as well as the modern representations, and I think the cover quilt is probably my favorite. So this is um, Quilts in America is the title of this book. Okay, so Danny's favorite part of the show, we invite you now to let us know in the comments if you're a bag lady or a bag dude. So go ahead and type that in the comments now. And we really love the bag making community. And we saw, especially this past week in the Facebook group, a ton of support. People had some personal things going on in their lives and they needed some support. And so I especially super, super love that because um, we all have things come up in our lives that maybe throw us for a loop. So I loved seeing all those um, supportive comments in the Facebook group. And if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, the link's in the description and you can join us there, share photos of your finished So Sweetness projects. And if you have any general bag making questions or questions about a particular pattern, you can ask that in the group as well. All right, so the demonstration for this week is, um, Danny's giving me a thumbs up, I'm not sure why, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I did a good job on something, I guess. The demonstration for this week is how to add an adjustable strap in two different ways. So in my demonstration, I'll show you how to add an adjustable strap by attaching it to the bag. So similar to that Lilium laptop bag that I showed you earlier. So this bag is, a, this strap is attached to the bag using a small tab of fabric right here. And the purse hardware needed is um, a metal rectangle and a slider. So the slider is always important because the slider is what makes the strap adjustable. So we're gonna show you a short clip right now on how I made the adjustable strap in this version with the tab attached to the side of the bag. Okay, turn the exterior of your bag right side out and then we're gonna go ahead and attach that strap extender to the metal rectangle. So I'm going to attach mine to the left side of my bag. Either is fine, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that strap extender in half so that the raw edges are touching. And then I'm gonna slide that metal rectangle on the fabric. I'm gonna center that strap extender on the side panel. Again, raw edges aligned. And then pin it in place. Then I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and stitch that down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to attach the strap to the opposite end of the bag as the strap extender is on. So again, we're going to center that strap, raw edges aligned. And then again, let's take this over to the sewing machine and sew that down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to attach the metal slider. So your slider might have a bar in the middle that moves up and down, or it might have just a static bar that doesn't move. Either one is fine. So I'm gonna slide this on the strap. So the right side of the strap is the side that's currently against the side panel. This is the right side of the strap. So I'm gonna grab it from the other end, the right side, and I'm gonna weave it over and under that middle bar so that it looks like this. Okay, so I'm gonna take the loose end of the strap and I'm gonna weave it through the metal rectangle. So again, as it looks from here, that's the right side of the strap extender. I'm gonna slide it through this end. I'm gonna take the loose end and you can go ahead and push some fabric through the slider just so it's out of your way. I'm gonna weave this through the underside over and under that middle bar. Okay, so give yourself a little bit of room. If you need to pull some of the strap out, you can. I'm gonna fold the raw end under, just like this. And then I'm gonna stitch the strap to itself. So the, the portion that came through the slider, that's what you're gonna be sewing down, to, down against. And again, if you need to move some strap out of your way, you can push some more through if you need to, to give yourself enough room. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew an eighth of an inch away from the pressed edge, and I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch away from the pressed edge, and that adjustable strap will be finished. Okay. 
All right, so I saw some questions in the comments about what the trim was that I used for the laptop bag. Actually, the trim on the laptop bag and the black on the Tudor bag are both faux leathers. Um, we're calling them top grain faux leathers from the shop. So that's at SoSweetness.com. We have a special tab for faux leathers and they're, both of them are listed there. So the second demonstration that I have for you today is for how to make an adjustable strap that's detachable. So most commonly an adjustable strap is detachable if it has a swivel clip on it and the swivel clip is usually attached to either a D-ring or a triangle ring or some other form of purse hardware usually attached to a tab on the side of the bag. So um, because this is detachable, you can go ahead and use the handles and when you need a crossbody bag, you can just go ahead and attach the swivel clips to the side of the bag. And so this second demonstration for tonight, Danny's gonna put up on the screen right now, is how to make an adjustable strap that's detachable. Okay, now it's time to make the shoulder strap um, and it's adjustable. So if you're using that option, you will press and top stitch your strap in the same manner that you did with both of the handle pieces. So I've got mine here already with the top stitching on it. Okay, so go ahead and pull out your ruler and we're gonna mark on one end of the strap half inch in and also three inches in from that short raw edge. Okay, you're gonna fold at those marks and press. So it will look like that. Okay, now you're gonna take out your metal slider. So this slider should be one inch in width um, in the center of the hardware. And your slider might have a middle bar that moves or it might have a static bar that just stays in place. Either one is fine. Okay, we're gonna take that strap and thread it through the bar. Okay, so we're gonna nestle that middle bar in that three inch marking that we made. So right there. Okay, and that short end will stay pressed under. On the wrong side of the strap, we're gonna stitch that down an eighth of an inch away from the end of the strap and also a quarter of an inch away if you're using quilting cotton. If you're using something that you can cut raw like leather or vinyl, you may instead wish to stitch it down like this because it'll be easier and less layers. So either option, if you're using quilting cotton, keep that half inch edge folded under. If you're using cork or leather, you can feel free to leave the edge raw. And if you wish to do so, you can also um, place a rivet there. Okay, now we're gonna add one of the swivel clips and this is the right side of the handle and the swivel clip is sort of gonna be face down so that it looks like this. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the other loose end of my strap and I'm gonna thread it over and under, again, that middle bar. Okay, so on this end of the strap, I'm again gonna take my ruler and make markings a half inch away from the short end and also two inches away. And we're gonna use these two markings to attach the second swivel clip, which will make the strap an adjustable strap. So here's that last swivel clip. And I'm gonna press or finger press at those two markings and the swivel clip is going to nestle on that two inch marking right there. Again, if you're using quilting cotton, feel free to use both of those markings so that you can fold that raw edge under. If you're using cork or leather, you may wish to just leave that edge raw as is. So again, we're gonna sew 
a quarter of an inch away from the short end and also an eighth of an inch to secure that end of the strap. Now you have an adjustable strap. We'll place that to the side for just a minute. Okay, so that's my demonstration on how to make an adjustable strap two different ways. And I think either one of those methods will serve you well depending on what type of purse hardware and what you want your finished look in your bag to be. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it was helpful. As I've mentioned, I had a lot of questions about that this past week, so I always want to help out and create a demonstration based on questions that I've gotten. So feel free to either comment in the Facebook group or drop me an email. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com, sarah with no H. If you have a burning question that would be better represented in um, a demonstration video. And I feel like especially the adjustable strap is one of those things that you might read it in a pattern and it might be slightly confusing, but I think seeing it done in person or in a video makes it sort of uh, crystal clear so hopefully that was helpful so I'd like to invite you now if you enjoy our live videos if you enjoy our sewing tutorials or our bag making tutorials if you could go ahead if you're watching on Facebook go ahead and hit the share button and regardless either if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube if you could please at least hit the like button which is a little thumbs up graphic Likes and shares help us out so much because Facebook looks very kindly on videos that have a lot of likes and shares and they consider sharing those videos with other people that may be interested in them but might not have seen those videos before. So your likes and shares definitely go a long way and thank you so much for doing that. So just as a friendly reminder, this is the last social Sunday until we get back from our vacation. So we do have a shipping break coming up it's from August 27th, uh, sorry, August 17th through the 27th. So any orders placed during that time will not ship out until we get back from the shipping break. If you plan on ordering any PDF patterns or videos during the shipping break, please place your orders for PDFs and videos separately from physical items. So if you order a PDF, place your order for fabric or notions in a separate order to make sure that you get your PDFs and videos instantly. So. Um, we also will not have a live show on August 19th and August 21st just because uh, while we're away we're not sure what the internet situation will be like and um, we've actually not really done any live shows from our cell phones so when we get back uh, we'll start right back up on our regularly scheduled live shows on Sundays and Tuesdays. Alright so if you have any questions for me go ahead and let me know in the comments I'll be answering some questions live in a second. I also wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Um, the giveaway prize from last week was the wool pressing mat and Michael Ann Boyd was the winner of the pressing mat so congratulations to you Michael Ann. I've contacted Michael Ann on social media and just waiting to hear back about her shipping address so we can get her prize out to her. Alright so Danny's going to put some questions on the screen and I'll answer a few questions live um, either sewing related, bag related. If you have a question about a notion or tool, go ahead and ask in the comments. Lorna says, I'm a newbie, only been sewing a year. You don't know how much these help me. So I'm so glad that the videos help you. That's our ultimate goal to get more people sewing, more projects, because um, I definitely feel that when you feel happy about a project that you've just sewn, you'll be inspired to sew more and more and more. There's nothing worse than either getting halfway done with a project or finishing it and feel like, um, you didn't fully understand it or you don't feel confident about finishing the project and you didn't have all that fun making it so the goal of our videos is to have everyone having a great time sewing and making things making new things every week uh, Melissa says do you have a tutorial on the greenbacks wallet trio so we don't ha currently have a video for that one um, it is on the list for sure definitely we hope to eventually get to all of the patterns so that they all have videos but we've done I think 16 full length uh, bag videos already. All of the minikins have videos, so there's 12 minikins, and then we've done a couple, at least how many, maybe four free full length bag videos on the YouTube channel. You can find those on YouTube or on the website. Um, Stephanie says, Danny, if we aren't watching live, sometimes I miss the live. Is there a way to watch the chatter that's going on during the video? Seems like I just see them 
when I'm watching live. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you watch the YouTube video after the fact, um, the chat, if you're wa watching on a desktop, the chat will be in the upper right hand corner. Danny, where's the chat? It might be in the center, it depends where you're watching. Up. Okay. But you want to change the comments from top comments to real time comments. Okay, Danny is suggesting if you're watching after we're off from being live, you can toggle to, to view chat setting. the chat setting to view real time comments. And that means while I'm talking, you'll see all the comments as they were posted live or at the times they were posted in relation to the person that was watching the video. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, Becky says, what bags are going to be in the four packs? So the Lilium laptop bag will be one of them. Uh, the Tudor bag, which I showed you before, was the second one. Um, Camp Stitch a lot is the third. And the dot, 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 dash bag will be the fourth pattern. And I almost feel like the dot, dot, dash bag is uh, two different bags because there's two, there's two different sizes in the dot, dot, dash pattern. Size large has tons of zippers down the front. Size small just has the one zipper in the front, but they both have a recessed zipper. So I feel like you're almost getting two slightly different designs for one. So um, the four pack will be uh, the four PDF patterns plus the four videos. So the four videos are going to be brand new. And we'll be releasing that at the very, very end of August because we just need a little bit more time to get the, the last two videos filmed. Lisa says, what is the benefit from the wool mat? So the wool pressing mat, um, I'm going to grab... I have a couple in my sewing room. So um, they make them in several different sizes. I use the 17 inch size in the studio and I use it for the live shows also. It's um, a half inch wide and it's completely made of wool. I like that the corners are rounded because I can't, um, I certainly um, not throw them around but I move them around an awful lot because we use them when filming and when I'm sewing I use them as well. I like having a mat right next to my sewing machine if I'm working at qu on quilt blocks because I can just iron the blocks without getting up from my sewing machine. And um, they also transfer the heat a lot better than a traditional ironing board because they're made of wool. So when you're ironing your quilt blocks or other projects, your project or quilt block is getting heated from both sides. So the side that it's laying against the mat but also the top edge because of the wool. Um, circulating and transferring the heat. So I really like mine a lot. I like that it's flexible and it's easy to store in my sewing room. Um, and like I said, they come in the different sizes as well, but I use mine. Gosh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do my sewing without it. And certainly we use it a ton for filming. As you saw in the demonstration videos, I had the wool mat behind my um, overhead camera for pressing and just for demonstrating. Tammy says, Sarah, I'm struggling with the last step of the ultimate art organizer. So if if you want to email me your question, um, if you if possible, always let me what let me know what step number that you're stuck on so that I can better help you. Uh, my email address is Sarah at SoSweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. We also have a video available for that pattern. I don't know if you had the video or um, if you were watching the video and you just needed a little bit of extra help, but feel free to email me and I'm always happy to help. Mona says, where can I get the pattern for the computer bag next to you? It's beautiful. So I actually linked to it in the description. The video is not out for that now, but it'll be out at the end of August in case you prefer having a pattern or vid and video at the same time. But if you prefer just to have the PDF pattern or the paper pattern, um, that link is in the description and that's available right now. Cheryl says, I have purchased a large scale print that I simply love. Any pattern you can recommend, I purchased a, a yard of three fabrics in the line. So I don't know if you're looking for a travel bag, but I certainly have other bag patterns that will fit large scale prints. Um, Danny's mentioning the Hyacinth bag, which I have, uh, I don't think I can unplug myself to grab that when it's hanging on the door. Um, but the Renegade bag might be another option. Um, I've seen a few Renegade bags made with a new Tula Pink De La Luna, which is a fairly large scale print. So that's an option. If you are looking for a travel bag, perhaps the airplane bag or the Sloan travel bag, those are both fairly large bags. Um, what else, Danny? Anything else pop into your mind? I think the Hyacinth bag was a good um, recommendation, Danny. Thank you. Um, Penny said, would you consider um, a top for the desktop cube? That's a great question. So the desktop cube is one of the, my Minikins patterns, that set of 12 patterns and videos. And when I was writing a pattern for that, it actually wasn't supposed to be uh, what it looks like in the final version. It was supposed to be something totally different with actually actually a lid on it. And when I sewed up the sample, I just didn't I didn't like how the lid was sitting on the top, and it kind of 
I don't know. It, it just wasn't working for me with the lid. It was slightly a, a different design, but that's why I decided to go with the desktop cube as you, as you know it with uh, just the open top uh, for storage. Um, let me pull one out. I've got one back here. But anyway, I did originally want to have a lid on a storage pattern similar to this, and it just didn't work out. So maybe I'll try to revisit that idea sometime in the future with a different design so a lid will fit better. <laughs> Eva says, will there be a way of getting the videos if we already own the pattern? So whenever we do another four pack video bundle, since some of the patterns in the bundle are previously released patterns that may have been out for a few years already, I do always offer a substitution. So what that means if um, when the four pack comes out, if you do choose to purchase it, if you already own, say if you already own the Lilium laptop bag pattern from the bundle, I offer sort of a swap, so that means uh, you just let me know which pattern you'd like instead, and I give you a different PDF pattern um, in replacement of the one that you've already purchased and you already own. So that's always an option. I never want people to buy a bundle and have one or two of the patterns already. So that'll be in the product listing, and we'll let you know on the live show when that new bundle comes out, just so you're notified and aware. Uh, Aleli says, on the cotton candy pouch uh, purse you showed in the past, what size hardware was on it? Um, half inch also um, is it a large cotton candy pouch want to make it Danny can you unhook me from my uh, microphone for a second so I can grab that pouch if you don't mind didn't want to rip it out okay so I wasn't sure my mic would reach um, as far as I needed to grab it but this is uh, that cotton candy pouch this is size large I did a demonstration on this, uh, I think last month, so how to add a strap to any bag or pouch. And so the purse hardware on this particular pouch is half inch. So the D-rings will hold um, a half inch width of fabric and same thing with the swivel clips. They also hold um, a half inch of fabric on, on these. So you can use different sizes, just make sure um, you're using the appropriate width of fabric for the D-ring and also for the swivel clip. Okay, Suzette said, I learned so much from your patterns and videos. You and Danny give me so much inspiration. You give me courage to sew things that I would never try on my own. Thank you for all you do. So I really appreciate that comment and I love to hear comments like this because it really motivates us to keep going with the videos. Uh, we do certainly like doing them, but uh, the demonstrations for sure hold a special place in my heart because I love sharing information and helping people be successful with their sewing projects. Stephanie says, can we see the inside of the computer bag, please? So sure, let me put my stuff to the side and let me open this up again. And again, this is size small, so there's a larger version. All right, I think I could set it down on the table and show you. So here's the padded front and back of the bag. There's a zipper divider in the middle. There's also three pockets over here for holding, um, I'm not sure if you would put a charger or other little uh, laptop accessories in there. And there's also that half inch craft foam on the bottom. So right down here, there's extra padding. So front, back, and bottom are well padded. And then there's the magnetic snap over here in the flap. I was asking Danny the other day um, if perhaps a different style or look of a flap on this bag would be more masculine. And I think he said it was masculine if you used uh, neutral or uh, darker fabrics, not flowers, uh, surely. <laughs> Martha says, where to purchase that wool mat? Uh, we actually have them on the website in three different sizes. So it's sosweetness.com. We have a great notion section on the website in the shop. So if you just click the notions tab after you're in the shop, um, those wool mats are all in there. Uh, Noelle says, I have a few patterns that I have bought at local quilt shops. Can I buy the video only for my patterns? For sure. So any of the patterns that we have videos available for, there's a video only option and that's for if you already own the pattern. So you would just go to the product listing of the pattern that you're looking for. There will be a drop down box with several options such as paper pattern, PDF pattern, video plus PDF pattern. And the option that you wanna look for is video only. So that means you already ordered the pattern and you just need the video. Emily Ann says, are you going to tell us about the email you got? Um, I'm actually saving that for the Tuesday show. I think I mentioned in the Facebook group that I got this great email from someone who made their first bag and they not only made the bag once, but they made it 20 times. So that was really awesome. I was planning on saving it for Tuesday's show um, because I wanted to show more pictures and talk about it. And I knew we were having the demo for the adjustable straps tonight. So I figured 
we'd have more time and more time to spend on that. Um, so that'll be this Tuesday. Uh, Yesenia says, I'm making an Oslo bag and was wondering if you have measurements to make the uh, self cut smaller. I know I can print smaller scale, but I don't know how to make the other scale correctly. So that's a great question if you're scaling your bag down um, because my patterns have measurements instead of templates for all the rectangles and squares. If you're scaling uh, the pattern pieces on your printer or scanner or if you're taking it to a copy shop and having them do it, I would suggest drawing out the rectangles that you need sized down so that you can have everything sized down uh, to the same percentage. So for example, if you're printing at 75%, um, just go ahead and draw the rectangles out as well so you have those as well as the other pattern pieces so that you can have them all scaled to the exact same percentage, if that makes sense. Uh, Doreen says, I just ordered two prints from your Jungle Avenue line from Etsy. Can't wait to get it to make an airplane bag. The pink one with the words and the pretty flower one. Yeah, I did design two lines of fabric, but it's been some years now. I designed fabric for Art Gallery Fabrics. Uh, my first fabric line was called Jungle Avenue, and the second one was called Fantasia. And um, I believe they're both out of print, but um, like Doreen said, she found a couple on Etsy. So I can't wait to see the finished bag, especially that airplane bag. Jill says, my husband thinks I am a genius sewer after I show him a Sew Sweetness project. I really like that. That's really funny. Um, well, you, you made it and you put your own spin on it, so it's your bag now. Uh, Melissa says, uh, Sarah, thank you for your tips on adding outside pockets to my Cumberland backpack. It worked out great. I'm so happy to hear that. I think we had that particular demonstration a couple Sundays back, but it was for how to add, add side pockets to any bag, and I showed... Um, both uh, slip stitched side pockets as well as gathered pockets and I also showed it in quilting cotton and mesh so you had several options and you can find that on my YouTube channel in case you're interested in something like that. It would be a great thing to add side pockets to perhaps the Lilium laptop bag or even that Tudor bag that I just showed you, the gray and black one. Um, Deborah says, I would love to see the inside of the Tudor bag. Sure thing, I still have it over here. All right, so here's, here's the outside and the front. Um, it's got purse feet on the bottom. Let me show you the inside. So as I mentioned before, there's instructions in the pattern and as well as the upcoming video for either the recessed zipper closure or if you want magnetic snaps. Oh, sorry. Danny says I'm blocking my microphone. Um, there's just slip pockets on the inside. However, since the instructions in the pattern are for a zippered pocket on the outside. If you want to have that zippered pocket on the inside as well, that would be super simple to do. And you would just add that to the lining in the same way that you added it to the exterior. Um, hey there, bag lady from North Carolina. How do you determine the measurement of the fabric when using different size Z rings? So this goes for hardware pretty much across the board. If you are using especially quilting cotton or if you're pressing or folding your fabric, um, in four layers, which you would do similar to double fold bias tape. So you would fold it or press it wrong sides together in half, open it out, and then press toward the inner crease. So that basically creates four layers. If you're doing four layers, whatever your hardware dimensions are, so say if your hardware is one inch wide, if that's uh, the width of fabric that, that the hardware will hold, you need to multiply by four since you're folding your fabric over four times. So if you're using the one inch hardware, you'll need to cut your fabric four inches wide. Um, if you're using half inch, like you said, again, you're multiplying by four. So half inch multiplied by four is two inches. If you are using cork or leather that's thicker and you're just doing two layers of fabric, so like I did with my Renegade bag, I used cork fabric for the straps and I just folded my straps over, instead of the four times, I just folded once wrong sides together in half. So that's just two layers of fabric. You'll just multiply times two. So if you're using half inch hardware, half inch times two is uh, one inch. So that's just an easy guideline for multiplying to get the cut width of your fabric before you start pressing and folding and manipulating it. Tamara says, which color of the top grain full leather is on the Lilium laptop bag? It's beautiful with that fabric. Yeah, so I really lucked out and I felt like it was a super close, close match. So this is the rose gold full leather from our shop and it was really, I felt like it really went well with this floral fabric and especially the background tint in this particular fabric. Um, this is by Cotton and Steel, by the way. This is the new Rifle Paper Company fabric called English Gardens. I used a canvas fabric for this particular bag, but they have quilting cottons and rayons as well. All right, Danny's uh, telling me it's time for the giveaway. So this week's giveaway is that CAFE book that I showed 
in the book review. So Quilts in America is the copy up for giveaway this week, as well as a stack of Tula Pink Fat Quarters. This is from her out of print Moonshine Fabric line. One lucky winner will win both the book and the Fat Quarters. All you have to let me know to enter the giveaway is answer this giveaway question. What is your least favorite fabric color? So I don't necessarily have a fabric color that I dislike, but I just have a hard time working it into projects. And I think um, that's usually red. Um, at least in the past it's been red, but I feel like I'm making a liar of myself because all these bags on set are red. Like my Sublime bag behind me, that's red. Brown. This bag I just showed was red. Yeah, Danny's suggesting maybe my color should be brown instead of red. But anyway, just answer that question in the comments. I'll announce the giveaway winner, not this Sunday, the upcoming Sunday, since we'll be out of town, which is uh, August 26th. So that's when our next Social Sunday show will be, and I'll, now, I'll announce the giveaway winner on August 26th. So thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Have a great rest of the week and happy sewing. Bye everyone.